ants against people. Who is better at maneuvering large the object in the labyrinth? Ants, like people, live in well-organized communities and just as people can collaborate while doing various tasks, for example when transporting large loads, which significantly they exceed their own size. Israeli scientists have made interesting an experiment to see who will be better at maneuvering a large load in the labyrinth. Researchers from the Weizmann Institute of Science to Study Behavior Group ANTS claim that under the appropriate circumstances, ANTS may be better than people in tasks involving collective problem solving. Professor Ofer Feenerman and his team checked who would do better maneuver a large object in the labyrinth. Results published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, sheds new light on group take-up decisions, as well as for the advantages and disadvantages of cooperation compared to the action in, alone. Ants are extraordinary creatures. They only measure a few inches and their brains have less than a million neurons and relatively simple the structure, and yet they have amazed the researchers. These insects can navigate using Earth's magnetic field in their tingos and yaks, they grow mushrooms and are much better than us in organizing the collective movement. In a new study, scientists from Israel decided to check, who is better at moving a large object with unusual shapes from point N to point B. A group of people and a group of ants were tasked with transfer a large T-shaped object from one room to another at what the room separated by a separate chamber with a narrow door. The people they treated this task as a challenge, and the ants were deceived and thought they bring food to their antach. In their experiments, scientists created two sets labyrinths that differed only in size to fit them into ants and people. The study involved ants of the species Paratrichina the longicornis. It is a common species of ants all over the world, length about 3 mm. In Israel, they are particularly prevalent along the coast and on the south of the country. The experiments were conducted in three configurations, single ant, a small group of about 7 ants and a large group of about 80 the individuals. Similarly in humans, one man a small group from 6 to 9 people and a large group of 26 people. In addition, people were instructed, not to communicate with each other when performing the task. In addition, the participants the experiment was instructed to hold the cargo only for those intended for that handle that simulated the way the object holds the ants. Handles and handles these included sensors measuring the force used by each person during the experiments. Scientists have repeated the experiment many times for each combinations, and then meticulously analyzed the videos and all advanced data using computer simulations and different models the physical. As you might expect, people's cognitive abilities they gave them an advantage. Strategic planning made it easy to surpass the ants. This was the case for individual tasks and in small groups. However, in the case of large groups was not so unequivocal. As the group's numbers grew, the ants fared better than when the task was done individually, and in some the cases did better than people. Groups of ants worked together in a shedded way showing a collective memory that helped them maintain a specific direction of movement and avoid repeating errors. People did not significantly improve their results, acting in groups. When communication between the group members has been restricted only to gestures and facial expressions, i.e. to a level resembling the one in the ants, their results decreased compared to the results of individuals. Researchers they determined that people tended to choose solutions that seemed too attractive in the short term, but were not beneficial in the long term. The colony of ants is actually a family. All of them the ants in the nest are sisters and have common interests. It's closely related a society where cooperation far outweighs the competition. 
That is why the colony of ants is sometimes referred to as a superorganism, a kind of living body it's made up of many cells that work together, Fien Ehrman said. Our findings confirm this vision. We have shown that ants acting as the group is wiser that for them the whole is more important than the sum of its parts. Group formation, on the other hand, did not expand the cognitive abilities of people. The famous The Weed Wisdom that has become so popular in the age of social networks it didn't come to the fore in our experiments, he added. Human DNA is everywhere and acts as invisible it's a fingerprint. It has a serious problem. The last decades have made great progress in many areas the sciences. This also applies to genetics and techniques for reading genetic material. Currently, even trace amounts of DNA found in water, sand, or air it is enough to extract the information needed to identify a specific people. This raises questions about privacy, because every person he leaves his DNA in the environment around him. Law enforcement can get new weapons in the fight the criminals. However, recent findings of scientists also lead to serious problem of personal data protection. It turns out that every one man leaves DNA in the surrounding environment, which acts as an invisible fingerprint. Wherever we go, we leave DNA behind. Modern forensics uses these traces that come from saliva, dead cells of the skin, hair, and other body secretions. Thanks to this, it worked out identify the countless criminals who would remain unpunished, if it wasn't for genetic code testing. The last few years have been a huge advance in DNA reading techniques. Two years ago, British scientists first showed that DNA released in the environment can be collected from air samples. Development of similar methods that helped reconstruct the Greenland ecosystem two million years ago. Researchers they did this thanks to microscopic fragments of the so-called the environmental DNA, the oldest ever identified. However, new discoveries raise concerns and may lead to a serious ethical discussion. Researchers at the University of Florida have shown that our DNA is really everywhere and someone with the right knowledge can it is easy to identify people from even air samples. The study was published in the journal Nature. A team of scientists took advantage of a modern approach to genetic code sequencing to search for environmental DNA. Environmental DNA. Samples came from sewage, sand from beaches and air from the veterinary hospital. It turns out that you can extract them on the basis high quality Edna people and animals. With the consent of the persons participating in the studies, the team was in the state isolate their DNA even from footprints in the sand, from used by them water and even identify people in the clinic veterinary treated animals and viruses present on site. For comparison scientists took and examined samples from remote islands that humans never they are visiting. They didn't find any interesting traces of them. The team showed that from the tested samples water, sand, and air, it was extremely easy to isolate high quality DNA, thanks to who could be identified specific people. According to the researchers, the implications of this discovery can be very much it's serious. Experts suggest a public debate on DNA sequencing people who might not have agreed to this. On the other the website uses similar technology can have many benefits, not only for science, but also for forensics. According to the researchers, every discovery carries with it possible benefits, but also the dangers of improper use of new ones the technology. It's no different in this case, argues David Duffy, the author of the study. These are the issues that we try to raise already early research so that policy makers and society have time to develop the relevant regulations adds the scientist.